It's a rainy day here in Florida today, so it's a good day for me to head inside and work on a tutorial. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to reconstruct a missing parent using the Borland Genetics web tools. And uh, one of the nice features about the Borland Genetics version of this tool, because there is a, a phasing tool on GEDmatch, is that the Borland Genetics tool allows you to use multiple uh, children of the, uh, of the missing parent and uh, combine them together. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm at the Borland Genetics website, and I'm going to go to my resource manager where I have my DNA inventory, and you see I have myself, and I have a couple kits for myself, including the super kit that I created uh, in the last episode from my Ancestry and my 23andMe kit. Uh, if you want to learn how to do that, you can go back and watch the previous tutorial. Uh, I have my mother's DNA kit and that's an ancestry kit and i have my brother steven's uh, ancestry dna kit and uh, since my father is unavailable to test what i set out to do today is use the borland genetics tools to create a uh, reconstructed kit for him using these resources um, so what i'm going to do uh, well first let me explain a little bit of how it works so it's called phasing and that is what i'm going to do is use my mother's dna to separate out the uh, parts that, I, uh, you know, the, the copies of the chromosomes that I have in common with her. And I'm going to subtract those out from my DNA. And what I'm going to be left with is the copies of the chromosomes that I inherited from my father. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my bro brother. Uh, I'm going to use uh, my mother to phase him. Uh, and then I'm going to have two resultant kits and they're going to represent the portions of my father's DNA that I inherited and the portions of uh, the DNA that my brother inherited, and then we're going to add those together. Uh, we should have 50% a piece, and on average, statistically, uh, half of that will be overlapping. It'll be, you know, we'll have inherited some of the same DNA from our father, and also half of it's going to be different from opposite uh, grandparent. So we're expecting, in theory, about a 75% uh, reconstruction. A little less though because included in that is the X chromosome so when it's done it it's we didn't neither of us inherited an X chromosome from our father so maybe around 70% or something like that should be a good day here. Um, so what we're gonna do is go to the tools and the missing parent tool is under the special phase scripts here. So the first step is to select the donor profile that represents either the child, the father, or the mother in the family to which you wish to apply the missing parent tool. So we're going to select a donor, and it's automatically in the dropdown are all the DNA resources uh, or the, all of the donor profiles attached to the DNA resources in my account. Um, and of course, I have a lot more DNA kits. This is my demo account. Uh, so we'll just pick one for now. Pick my mother. All right, and select the role of this donor. We have to tell it that's the mother uh, and, or the parent. Okay, we continue. And it's asking us now to select the child. So let's start with me. And then we click continue. Now, we there are multiple uh, DNA kits here, so we have to pick... Uh, which is the appropriate DNA kit that we want to use. Let's see. So for my mother, um, I'm going to choose her 100% ancestry kit. That's a factory kit. Uh, for myself, I am going to choose my super kit that we created in the last tutorial uh, using the Humpty Dumpty option three. So I'm going to continue. And we are going to have to in, in, enter some information about uh, our missing parent. So we're going to create a profile for him. Now I have a picture queued up here. Might as well upload it. I think it's in my downloads. All right, that's a picture of our father. Uh, Stephen Thomas Borland, male, born 1950 uh, to 2011. Okay. Now continue. And the estimated wait time is about two minutes. All 
Okay, and here we go. So we have successfully created a new donor profile for our father, and the phasing is successful, and the output kit can now be accessed via the resource manager widget. So let's go back to the resource manager and see if it's there. So now we've got my kits, my mother's kits, my brother's kits, and now there is a kit for my father that has 47% coverage. And that should be half minus the X chromosome, I guess. Um, and a little rounding looks like it rounded down a bit. Okay, so now let's repeat and do the same exact thing for my brother. So we're going to go to the tools, missing parent. And this time, uh, pick him. Select the role as a child. And I could have picked my mother first again if we wanted. Uh, okay, so now we select the mother and continue. And again, we're going to pick her ancestry kit. Uh, all right, I have a lot of other kits for her because I've been doing some, some work on my own. Uh, even though they're not in the demo account, they are still attached to her profile, which is shared with my personal account. So um, that's why we're seeing a lot of kits there. And after you use the tools for a while, you'll probably have multiple kits, uh, reconstructed kits for each person too. Okay, and we'll select Steven, who only has one kit, and continue. And this time, we can select the donor, because I already created the donor profile, and we don't have to do it twice. So let's hit continue and do it again. Okay, so now let's go back to the resource manager widget where it should be. And now we have two kits for my father. So when we drill back further for reconstructions, we, we're going to want to use these kits because they're phased. And I'll explain more about that in future videos, but the important thing to know here is do not delete uh, these intermediate phase kits, even though I'm going to show you how to merge them now uh, to make one combined kit. Uh, so my brother is here, it also 47%. Also, look, uh, just notice here in the notes section, it automatically, the tool, the software automatically creates some notes. You could change those notes, but if you're going to be using the Creeper and some other tools in the future, you probably just want to add to them rather than clearing the existing note uh, because sometimes the Creeper looks for the, these automated notes to know how a kit was created. Uh, so this is not just information for you or for people viewing the kit, it's also information that the Creeper relies upon. When uh, and, and for those uh, new to Borland Genetics, the Creeper is the uh, subscription uh, automated assistant. Okay, so let's go and view the donor profile for my father. And we're going to scroll down to the Humpty Dumpty tool. And since there's more than one kit, uh, for him, uh, there are some merge options. For this application, we're going to use, uh, we're going to perform a stereo merge. Uh, we're going to take these two mono kits, and mono, I mean, only has one copy of each chromosome, and we're going to merge them together, and the output we expect is uh, that we're going to reconstruct portions of my, uh, in portions of my father's DNA, we're going to have both copies of the chromosomes uh, reconstructed, which would be a stereo uh, merge. So let's do that. And we're going to select the two kits. One is Kevin Clade and one is Stephen Clade, it labeled them. Um, and then we are going to execute. We can either cancel and return or we can execute the merge script. Let's execute the merge script. Now it says 15 minutes, but these are times that I had calculated when we were using the desktop tools that predated these web tools uh, to form this operation. So I think it's a little bit faster now, but again, I'm going to forward through this, uh, go through this fast forward like I did on the other two times we were waiting. Uh, so let's go back to the resource manager widget. And now, 
we should have a third kit here from my father, and we do. And as we predicted, um, the reconstruction coverage is 71%. So that means we've reconstructed 71% of the genome of a person who uh, was unavailable to test uh, using the kits of uh, his relatives. Um, and this kit will function just like an ordinary DNA kit in the database. Uh, when it processes, we're going to be able to uh, use it to see his matches and, and who he shared DNA with, and uh, both uh, living members in the database, if they're public, and also to any other reconstructions in the database. Uh, so he may have some uh, DNA matches that are, uh, you know, deceased ancestors of the users in the database. Um, I know he'll match some of mine, of course. Uh, okay, uh, well, that's it for this video. This is pretty straightforward. Um, it's one of the one of the simpler workflows. Uh, so I hope you understand what we did and can see the importance of why we did it and why this would be useful. Um, and I guess uh, as to the utility of this, why it's useful, I mean, there's a, first of all, we didn't actually add any new information. We're not going to get any more matches than we would have uh, if we had aggregated, you know, just looked at my brother's matches, looked at my matches. But what we did is we sort of created a filter. So we we combined all of the paternal DNA from both of us and put it into one file, essentially, so that it can generate a match list uh, of only uh, matches that he would have matched uh, if he were alive to take the test. Um, and that's very useful, I think, for genetic genealogy. Um, all right. Till next time.